One year after regaining his titles, the unified heavyweight champion of the world is back to business. Anthony Joshua regained his titles in New York, uh, in uh, Saudi after losing them in New York, of course. Yep. Uh, and after a year of uncertainty for our sport, good to have him back as well, isn't it? It is. He's, uh, he's a main man, and some would say he's, uh, he's flying the flag for us. And uh, do you know what? I'm just trying to get used to our little position here. We've been raised slightly. The telly's to my right. Yeah, we've been raised slightly. Like like, and I didn't right. see the step. Tripped over that when we yeah, came in. Tripped over. When Sky were filming. But yeah, uh, look, I'm um, it, firstly so pleased to have passed uh, the final COVID test because yeah. this was our 12th one. This is our 12th one. with Matchroom and we did one in Munich. And obviously, for those of you who haven't seen, I did play a prank on Darren and get security guard down to tell him he had failed, which yes. gave you a little 15 seconds. Which is funny of, enough because uh, I'm always on a wind up. I, 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 I didn't even think I about it. I thought you would be a little bit more savvy to that, to be honest. Yeah, I, like, do you know what? I looked in the peephole and I see the security guard step back. So when I opened the door, he just went like that. <laughs> and yeah, it's on Chris's Twitter. <laughs> Sorry about that, mate. Um, not to start on a somber note, because I don't want to, but I know that today is the 14-year yeah. um, anniversary since you lost Gary. Um, how are you feeling today, all right? Yeah, do you know what? I, I, look, I miss him every day. Um, massive loss for my family, but look, I know he's there with me, and I'm just glad that I was able to do a little bit for him. I don't, I don't stop thinking about him. and You know, look, it, it is what it is. It'll always be a tough day. For, yeah. for the rest of my life but you know every day I just keep trying to make him proud and well, we're trying, to, I'm doing we're trying to have a bit of fun today mate um, I'll go easy on your FIFA as well alright <laughs> um, right I think the first two guys are ready Kez Ashfat and Ashley Lane Kez Ashfat looking to get back to winning ways after the defeat to Mark Leach a few weeks ago both guys are standing now uh, by with Eddie Hearn thanks guys thanks everybody after a great press conference earlier announcing the signing of Campbell Hatton we move on to the main press conference the big press conference the press conference for the Unified World Heavyweight Championship between Anthony Joshua and Kubrat Pulev, live on Sky Sports box office this Saturday and DAZN around the world. Plenty of fights to get through on the card and kicking us off is a cracking little fight between Kez Ashfak and Ashley Lane. Welcome, gents, both of you. Uh, Kez, I'm going to start with you. Coming back, we know disappointment in the defeat to Mark Leach. You've had your experience now boxing behind closed doors. We do have a thousand back in at the weekend, but this is a big fight for you. What have you taken away from the defeat to Mark Leach? You can always learn something from a, a, a defeat. Um, you learn more than you do from, from a win because sometimes things that go wrong, if you still win the fight, you might brush them under the carpet. But like I said, there was, there was a load of things, not so much in terms of, yeah, my performance, but the reasons behind the bad performance in my eyes was behind the scenes and stuff that I could control and couldn't control. So. It was just one of them learning curves, and I just felt like it, what, what was meant to be was meant to be that night. And it wasn't so much that I got beat by the better lad. It was more, it just wasn't my night, and that's the way I see it. I find that you know, when a, a young fighter's coming through and they step up and they take a defeat, sometimes the career becomes a lot more exciting. You know, they have to take bigger tests. This is a good fight with, you, with Ashley Lane, but all of a sudden you will be moving faster and you have experienced that defeat rather than just almost being gifted all these victories to a point where you're not good enough when you take that leap. So confident that there's still a huge amount to come from Kez Ashvak and chasing titles in 2021. Definitely, without a doubt. Like you say, that defeat, if anything, will keep me in good stead down the line. Um, and taking this fight with Ashley Lane, Ashley Lane's no mug. His last eight fights, he's lost one. And that was for the British and Commonwealth. Um, so that shows his pedigree. And within them last eight fights, he was a Commonwealth champion at my weight as well. So I'm ready to take all, all, all the step ups. Uh, as you've noticed already, I, I take all the fights. I'm not, I'm not one to, sh to shy away from a fight. And that's the way I mean to go on. Yeah, Ashley, former Commonwealth champion, welcome as well. And welcome to your team, Chris Sanagar and, and others, who's probably done 600 laps outside, I think, of, his, uh, of the bubble so far. Big fight for you, big moment. You've been involved in some big fights as well and come into this full of confidence and obviously looking to inflict consecutive defeats for Kez Ashfak. Yeah, I mean, it's just a small team. Me and Chris, we go on the road, we do the business, you know, we don't care where we're going. Fine, Kez Ashfak, yeah, it's, you know, I mean, his confidence being hit. He's going to be feeling a bit down from that loss to Mark Leach. But I'm expecting him to bring a good performance. And we're bringing a good performance. I'll be a great fighter on the night. And God willing, I'll have my hand raised. What's boxing been like for, for you during the pandemic? We know that you're always that guy who keeps himself ready. Jamie and Chris putting your name forward for all these big fights as well. Frustrating 
at times, not knowing when you're going to be boxing, and obviously a major plus to get a good performance and a good run out on a massive card before the close of the year. To be honest, Eddie, I mean, like a lot of people probably don't know, I've retired in September. So, like, you know, the COVID came, the lockdown came, I got a new job. I was like, boxing's, you know, behind me now. I'm moving on. And then as soon as I said that, Jamie and Chris kept thinking, we've got your fight, we've got your fight. I said, nah, I'm retired, leave it out. And then Jamie rang me two weeks ago, do on this fight on the AJ show? I was like, yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's, it's an opportunity you can't turn down, you know. So um, for me, I, I, I see this fight as a bonus for me. You know, I walked away from boxing three months ago. I wasn't going to come back. Now I'm here on one of the biggest shows of the year, you know, on the undercard of, like, World Heavyweight title. Like, this is, this is a bonus. So no matter what happens on the night, I'm, I've already won. And I've just paid for a year's, me a year's license in medical. I might as well carry on boxing now. And obviously, if you do win, one thing is for sure, you definitely won't be retiring. Don't <laughs> care what you say, you won't be. <laughs> well, you know, no, I, I, I don't think I can now anyway, you know. Um, but like, you know, some people are saying, like, this fight's do or die. I think Kaz Aspo could be a British champion in the future. He's got a great amateur pedigree, he's got good skill, you know, and um, whether he loses or wins on the night, he'll, be, he'll go and be a champion in the future. With me, you know, I've been there, I've done it, I've won the Commonwealth. I mean, like, back in September, uh, March 2017, I was going to retire again. I didn't. Within six months, I was Commonwealth champion. So, I mean, like, one loss doesn't dictate whether you go on to win titles or not. So, I mean, whatever happens Saturday, Kazakhstan's Ka got a future in boxing. I also got a few more years left in boxing. And like I say, God willing, I win, and I can't retire now, can I? You know? <laughs> I mean, look at this, it's beautiful. Well, I'm not sure Chris will let you. Nah, no. I mean, I, I, he won't let me. <laughs> Ashley, thanks. Kez, just finally from you as well. Do you feel the pressure on Saturday for a good performance? We know you're coming off the disappointment. You want to make a statement on Saturday night? Definitely want to make a statement, but pressure doesn't bother me. Pressure makes diamonds, you know? I'm, I'm one of them people that I've been to the highest, highest mountains and the amateurs, the Olympics, all that sort of stuff. Didn't bother me then, so it won't bother me now. Good, well, we look forward to this cracking opener to the night. This is going to kick off the Facebook action on Saturday night. Kez Ashfak against Ashley Lane. Gentlemen, if we could have a head-to-head -head here, please. Yeah, so Kez Ashfak looking to bounce back after that first career defeat to Martin Leach. Uh, not an easy night for him at all, that. No, it wasn't. Um, but like he said there, it doesn't define you, uh, a defeat. It's how you come back from it. And with the ability that he has, the, the boxing know-how, I expect him to come back. And uh, he, that, do you know what? I, I, saying there that he's not feeling the pressure, I, I think come Saturday night, he'd be nervous. Um, uh, Ashley Lane, of course, went 12 with uh, Brad Foster for the Commonwealth and British title. Mm. Um, Good fight, that. It was a good fight. It was late in that 12th round. The last few seconds. Yeah, and it got hit low just before that just as well. Before, and I think yeah. he was actually, he probably threw himself back into the mix a little bit too quickly. He mm. should have taken a few more of the of the five minutes rest and then he got hurt. And, but I mean, look, he, he wasn't at the level of Brad Foster, but he was game, he was tough, he showed a lot. Yeah, he was um, in. Yeah. Uh, and Kez knows he has to be on his game. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, right on cue, the Hello, man mate. is here. Didn't think we'd see you back this quickly. Glad that you're getting back in the ring. And obviously, Fighting man, Chris. Good, I know you are, mate. I know you are. One thing I was going to ask you was, I know how disappointing when you exited Rio. I think it was Chachai Butley, wasn't it? The yeah. Thai fighter. How did the defeat to Mark compare in terms of how you felt afterwards to, to exiting at the Olympics? Was it comparable? Yes, but I think now I'm mentally stronger. And uh, in terms of religion as well, I'm a lot stronger in my religion. And that's what's been able to bring me back so quick having that faith in, in God where back then maybe the faith might not have been as strong so I was depressed for ages but um, yeah like I say I'm, I'm in a good place now honestly I'm, I'm in a great place I know what went wrong before and it wasn't so much yeah don't wrong it went wrong in the ring but 
the reasons for that were outside the ring, stuff that I could and couldn't control. So I know exactly what went wrong. It's all about making it right now. What about tac- tactically? What went wrong on the night? Tactically, for me, yeah, the tactics in many ways, they were OK, but I let my emotion take over a bit too much. Mm. And, uh, whereas you've, see, you've seen me box time and time out. I've, I'm, I'm best when I do box and not try to fight. But in there, I came from... How long ago was it, the fight? Six weeks, was it? Yeah, Six weeks. Long. Have you been able to spar much in the build-up so, for this fight? For about three weeks. Three weeks yeah, sparring, yeah. yeah. But you can class that fight as a spar, I guess, can't you? But, mm. <laughs> but you know, it's, training's been perfect for it. Yeah, good. And in terms of fitness-wise, I'm carrying it from there anyway because you don't lose mm. much fitness in a week and a half. So. Which is straight back in the gym. A week and a half later, I was back in the gym. Yeah. And nice. the reality is you haven't had that long to work with Angel... I think going into to the Mark Leach fight and, and at some points when the emotion started to get the better of you I almost thought you kind of looked like you were stuck in between two styles a little bit and that's natural is that fair? Definitely without a doubt I think if you've got that perfect to be honest I was stuck in between two styles um, and like I say with the emotions I think the first three rounds weren't too bad and then after the first knockdown which fair enough I, caught, I, I, I said it was a knockdown um, I think emotions played a big part but then yeah. Second knockdown, which I didn't agree with, just brought me all the way back again. You, didn't, you couldn't get your head back. Yeah, that was it, really. Um, right, Kez, I'm really sorry to cut you off there, mate. No we, problem. We wish you all the very best. Well, we'll see you away in tomorrow. Okay, mate. See Take care. Thanks a lot, mate. See you soon. Right, next up on the bill, uh, second on the televised uh, fight bill, East Florian Marku and Jamie Stewart. Both guys are ready. Standing by. Let's hand you over to Eddie. Thanks, guys. Uh, the second fight of the night, the first fight on the live transmission on Saturday night, Sky Sports and the zone around the world. This is another cracking fight. Two undefeated fighters. That This fight got made very late in the week, and I'll go on to explain that shortly. But we had someone up here earlier with an incredible following, with a great Ricky Hatton, with his son Campbell Hatton turning pro. This man to my right, Florian Marco, I'm not sure I've seen such support, such passionate numbers. So many people sliding in my DMs, initially with a little bit of stick, you know, now with a little bit of love, because we're delighted to welcome Florian Marco to the matchroom team and social media is so powerful because the man to my left stepped up a couple of days ago and got himself a big payday and a big fight and a massive opportunity to create a name for himself. Florian Marku v Jamie Stewart, the first fight of our live transmission on Saturday night. To give you a little bit of perspective, we made a fight with Florian Marku earlier in the week. Um, Unfortunately, I think his supporters scared the gentleman off a little bit, and he decided that he had a rib rib injury just a few hours later, which was quite convenient. We tried to make the Chris Congo fight, unfortunately couldn't make weight, and all of a sudden, Jamie Stewart piped up on social media. I think he said he was gonna cave his head in at one stage, but you know, I know that was just to get the fight, we'll come on to that. That But this is an opportunity of a lifetime for fighters that are willing to take risks and take gambles. Jamie, we'll start with you. Welcome, welcome. Big fight for you, big stage, you stayed ready. You got the call, you're here. Well, I've been ready since September, since my last outing with Hennessy Jr. It, it was middleweight, got called it light middleweight because I couldn't make the weight. But uh, yeah, I, I did what I had to do to get the fight because I wouldn't not want to, you know, like sometimes the boxer might not fight because of someone pulling out. So I thought I could grab an opportunity to get back out there and people see who I am and what I've got. Those opportunities for, for fighters like you, you know, not coming through with, you know, the GB experience, the ABAs, the Olympic background, you've got to take those chances when they come. We oh, saw you on Channel 5, beating Mick Hennessy, you were a junior, you were the away fighter there, you came on, you'd done the business in a really good performance. How much more is there to come from I, you? I feel that there was more, because I took that fight on a two-week notice. I weren't really training for that fight, where since after that fight, I've been in the gym every day, non-stop. I'm, I've been down lower than the weight that I am now today, so I feel very comfortable, and... I know he's dangerous, and that's all that I want for my supporters. I, I've been saying for months now, I don't want fight journeyman no more. I need a test and a challenge, and I know he's a big puncher, and that's just like something I'd like risk. Well, he's all action. He is a big puncher, but this is the biggest of stages. I mean, this is the World Heavyweight Championship undercard. This is live on Sky Sports Box Office, live on the zone. Are we going to see you go out there and enjoy yourself, have fun? I mean, a, a win for you here. I can't tell you how big a win for you would be. It's all about life changing. This is, this is a game changer for you. Even a good performance yeah. is a game changer for you. I've got that many people following back home that I've got to go out and put a good show on here. I've got a lot of, there's a lot of boxers in Stoke that are not with my gym, but 
I think they're fake boxers that sell tickets and get the easy fights. So I'm like, I want to be there fighting decent fights. I want to be there showing that I'm tough and I'm there and I'm ready. Florian, got a, we know the man called the fight out. You've got to give him the respect for taking it. Many others wouldn't. Ross in, in the office went through 40 opponents and they all turned this opportunity down before Christmas, live on TV. Um, not going to be easy for you on Saturday. We know this, this man is undefeated. We know he hasn't had many fights, so therefore he doesn't have much fear, which should lead to a fantastic fight on Saturday. Yes, thanks. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for putting me in this show. I have been waiting this moment a long time. Thanks also to Joshua. About the opponent, I didn't understand really good what he was talking about, but I have been training really hard. This is my moment, you know, and I don't care who is in front of me. I don't see opponents. I see only someone who tries to stop me from reaching my dreams and making my family lives better, you know, that is boxing is for me to make my life and my family lives better. We talked earlier in the week with Sam Jones and, and thanks for all his help as well in, in joining the team and also uh, for this fight. The support you have is quite incredible. You know, when you started telling me in the week about the potential of fighting in Albania, filling up football stadiums over there, that's the kind of stuff as a business and as a company we live for and we yes. dream about. How yeah. real is that? I mean, we know you've got a tough fight on Saturday, but this support is like something that we've never seen before. Yes, the thing is that the UK fans doesn't know really good my, my background. I'm not new in this game. I have been fighting since I was 12 years old. I have given 110 kickboxing fight. I was four times world champion. You know, it's not new for me. The, my fans have been following my career from the beginning. I have been fighting a lot of times in Europe, and, but my Albanian fans make the difference, you know, they, they, they fill stadiums wherever I've been and I appreciate that. Now I will win with my performance and my character, also the UK fans, I'm really happy and when I will fight back home, I guarantee that I will feel whatever arena is back. We know Jamie will bring the smoke on Saturday but you want all the smoke, don't you, 147 pounds. I mean, Chris Congo, Josh Kelly, Connor Ben, it doesn't matter, you want to face all these guys if you get through on Saturday. Exactly. I want to fight whoever thinks that is the best welterweight in this division. Don't, don't bring me guys that they have bad record and good fighters. Bring me the best guys that they have best records and you see what I was going to do to them. When they are in the ring with me, they change. Maybe before, before the ring they talk, I'm going to do this to Florian, but when they are in front of me, everything changes. When they feel my speed and my power, they change their mind and you're going to see this first Saturday and then the next fight. Congratulations to Jamie Stewart who, who accepted the fight. Respect for that, but I'm sorry for Saturday. Okay. Well, I know that two great guys, two undefeated fighters. This is going to be all action to kick us off on Saturday night. Gentlemen, let's have a head-to-head -head up here, please. Well, Marku isn't exaggerating about the support that the Albanians bring. I remember a guy called Kresnik Kato. He used to spy with him when I was boxing, and he used to bang out arenas. Honestly, thousands used to really? come, and they make a proper racket. They don't just turn up in numbers yeah, and just yeah. sit there. They make a racket. So the support, I'm looking forward to, to when we do get packed out arenas, to hearing how many he brings and how loud they actually are. There was, I used to go watch the World Series boxing at your call and obviously Ukraine Ottomans fought yep. there and, and then occasionally you'd have Albanians on the team because you could have international picks for your teams. And mate, the noise in there from, from Albanians, Ukrainians, yeah. they, they love their boxing, mate. Yeah, oh, they do. They do. That, that threw me a little bit actually because didn't Hergovic represent Kazakhstan? Uh, yeah, he did. Yeah, so yeah, I, I didn't know, I nice, didn't know that. Didn't nice, know you could nice, have yeah, good knowledge. Um, yeah, so uh, Florian Marku, um, I was speaking to a chap called Nathan Benden, who was one of only two fighters to go the distance with him. Benden is someone I knew from, from days commentating on the, the Muay Thai and K1 circuit. Proper, proper tough blokes. And I said, what's he like? Um, and he said, very, very explosive. And he said, actually hurt to hit him. He said, very dense guy. He looks like a <laughs> dense guy. But yeah, for Nathan to say that, a guy that's you know, fought with Muay Thai, to, to yeah. make a point of that, he said, very, very dense guy, very tough, very strong. So um, I, I think 
uh, our man Jamie Stewart is up against it. Oh, he is. He is, absolutely. But he's game and he understands. Again, we've said this every single show since Fight Camp started. For some of these lads, the, the pot of goal is huge. Eddie said it himself, winner stays on. And for him to win, he gets another opportunity. I think I, think, I can see it now. Uh, all roads are kind of leading towards Conor Ben, I think, for Marku. Yeah, He's Richard, desperate because it's a massive fight. Yeah, they talked about um, the uh, the Ryland Charlton fight if he gets through this one, which I think is a really good fight and just a, a, another step to prove that he's yep, ready. Yep. But after that, there's no reason why him and Conor Ben couldn't, couldn't get it on, is there? Yeah, um, it's one that I would like to watch just stylistically. They gel, didn't they? As they much do. as Conor Ben's coming on, he's improving all the time. There's still that fire, and we, we see it all the time. He just likes getting stuck in. Marku, for me, very similar. You know, I think there is boxing ability there. He said it himself. You know, he's been boxing his whole life, mm. but he's got that fire. You mm. know, he's got that real eagerness to bite down his gums and let the shots go. So, you look, I'm desperate for that fight one day. Yeah, uh, he's looking to impress Saturday night. One man that did impress us uh, at fight camp was Kieran Conway. Really good win uh, over Nav Mansuri. Good to see him back in action. Ten rounds, super welterweight um, against McCauley McGowan. Just waiting to hear whether the guys are, are ready. Eddie sat um, just on his tod at the moment, waiting for those. But yeah, Conway looked, he looked very, good. very good. He looked good. Do you know what? Uh, he looked solid, didn't he? And that's not something that we've said with Conway before. You know, he's, he, he looked like he'd really filled out. Mm. Looked like he was punching a lot harder. And he was in there with Mansuri. He was really game and really fancied the job. But he was solid and looking forward to, to seeing more of him and seeing him now he's filling out a little bit more getting a little more mature seeing you know what damage he can make in the division so uh, Conway and McGowan are standing by on the stage let's head back over to Eddie thank you guys the second live TV fight of the night is another cracker Kieran Conway against Macaulay McGowan of course we know that originally uh, Sully Sissoko was due to fight Kieran Conway in stepped another man with the opportunity to change his career, another man with the opportunity to turn everything on his head in Macaulay McGowan. We'll start with you, Kieran. Um, you look in tremendous shape. We know that you are due to face Suleiman Sissoko. You now have a Brit in front of you that's coming with plenty of fire and plenty of passion, but very focused ahead of this important fight for you on Saturday. Yeah, I'm massively focused. I always look at what's in front of me. Uh, I'm not looking past it at all. I'm here to do a job. I was gutted when Sissoko pulled. Um, but uh, fair play to him for stepping in at this sort of notice. I've been there, stepped in at short notice, and um, I respect that a lot. But I'm here to do a job, and I'll fight fire with fire if I have to. Yeah, we talk about that. It wasn't so long ago before we all teamed up that you were the guy that was waiting for the phone call, looking to take the opportunity at late notice. You did it against Ted Cheeseman when you got the fight for the British title and, and the draw in that fight as well. So you've been in these kind of positions before, and you know how hungry Macaulay McGowan will be on Saturday night. Yeah, but I took the, I took the um, short notice things because I stay in shape. Um, I'm huge for the weight. I'm big. I'm coming in with the, the, the presence. Um, it's just going to overwhelm him on the night. Do you feel you need to make a statement on Saturday night? You are the favourite going into the fight. Such a tremendous mix. We won the purse bid yesterday for Ted Cheeseman against JJ Metcalf. Tremendous fight. Sam Eggington, uh, Anthony Fowler, all these great 154-pounders. Um, also, Scott Fitzgerald coming back into the mix in February as well. Do you feel a, a statement is needed and what a massive platform for you to do that? Yeah, a statement probably is needed, but this is a perfect place to do it. Um, there's going to be absolutely loads of people watching this and um, hopefully they're going to remember my name and, and really cement it into that list. Well, Macaulay, welcome. You are a character, Yo, mate. I saw right. uh, in your last fight, you know, you faced the, the very, very tough Kazakh, one of the top young prospects in the world. You stood with him for 10 rounds in, a, in a, a tough, tough performance. You called out this fight. You stayed ready. Massive platform. Big opportunity for you on Saturday. Yeah, um, took a bit of a beat in my last fight, but life's about being resilient and bouncing back. I know a lot of people uh, think I can't do it on a week's notice, but watching the film the other day, and um, bees, by all gravitational law, should not be able to fly. The short and fat, little wings, but bees don't care what humans think. I don't care what anyone thinks. I'm coming for the win. Are you the bee? Are you the bee I'm on Saturday I'm a big, night? horrible Mancunian bee. That's what I am. <laughs> what are we going to see from you in this fight? You know, I mean, a victory would be life-changing. A great performance and, and an entertaining fight would also be life-changing as well. What's the style of Macaulay McGowan? We know Kieran Conway is an excellent technical boxer. Looks really, really good. Have you got to get in there? Have you got to rough him up? Have you got to make it uncomfortable for him? Listen, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, I'm going to come with anything different. I'm just coming for a fight. That's all I'm coming for. It's going to be an absolute fight. That's it. 
Absolute war, baby. Let's go. Whoa! <laughs> well, you started slow and now you're moving really fast. That was going to be my last question, but I feel like there's more to come. So is it from the first bell, Macaulay? First bell of action. Because a lot of people sit here and say, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. If you go out and you have a war on Saturday night, the people are going to fall in love with you. Uh, mate, I'm here to entertain and have a, have a good read and write and then go home and see my family. I'm not here to... Uh, I've stepped in on a week's notice. If you can come in here to, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to have a war and then go out and just tippy-tappy and, you know, whatever. Mate, I got a paste in my last fight. I need, I need to make a statement now. I need to go out there and do what I do best. Not think about it. Just go and do what I do best and have a good fight. And I believe, I honestly believe, I wouldn't have took the fight if I didn't think I could make a statement and win. Why, why would I? Why, why would I take a fight if I thought oh, I'm going to lose? So... Yeah, I'm coming for it. Good, good man. The Manchester B. You got everything to gain and you got everything to lose. Hungry, hungry competitor. Arguably a little bit crazy as well. He's going to come and bring it, the action on Saturday night. I don't think it's arguable that he's crazy. I think he is crazy. I think he's quite delusional. Um, the words he says, knocking me out, I don't know where that comes from. Um, and I don't think anyone's even come close to that yet. Um, so, with three knockouts on his I'm record. I'm a bumblebee, remember? I don't care about what the humans think. I don't know how to reply to that one. <laughs> I do. Kieran Conway against McCauley McGow in 10 rounds of non-stop action. They've talked the talk. Let's see it. Yeah, Saturday definitely. night. Let's go to war. Yeah, you're a good kid. We'll have it. We'll have it. Definitely. Good. We will. We will have it. In the ring uh, around 7pm on Saturday night. It's going to be a cracker. Gents, both to here for a head-to-head, -head, please. Oh, never good when you miss a fist bump, is it? Um, I think before we play FIFA this afternoon, you could do with like a Macaulay, McGowan pep talk. That's well, what's missing. Going. That energy's missing. You sit down, I think I, you've almost, you're yeah. beaten before you... My you, energy is just, it arrives when I'm losing. Yeah, you need to get in and you yeah. need to be like that. That's what I want to see this afternoon. Yeah. So if you're not up for it, go and speak to him before. All right, get slapped around the face, a little sting from the bee. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but in terms of getting stung, um, Terzen Bay, Kulak met. He did oh. really, really stick it on it, him. Put it this way, Chris. I, I don't think he'd be in many fights harder than that. If you haven't seen it, check it out. He mm. get, I was, it's not harsh in saying this. He gets walloped yeah. from the first to the last. But belt. he hangs in there. He, he hangs in there and he shows some real toughness. Uh, and he's going to need that against Kieran, uh, who's, who's getting better and better every fight. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I'm interested in this one. I am. I'm just uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the progression of Kieran. And here he is. Here he is. I love that. that. He said the word Kieran. I look up and there he is like magic. Yeah, good time. On it. How are you, mate? That's what it's about. Yeah, all good. All good. good. I'm ready. Seems like, I can't work out what this seems like a long time ago or no time at all that, that we were sat commentating on your fight in, yeah. uh, in fight camp. How does, it, how does it seem to you? Yeah, it was, um, it weren't too long ago, was it? Yeah. It was, what, two months? So did you go straight back into camp? Did you have a week off? Or? I had one week off. And I'm, I always stay ready anyway. Like, um, I'm young, so I can. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so I was ready to take any sort of opportunity coming up. I wanted another fight before Christmas, so that was the mentality that I had. Are you worried about the bee? I'm not worried about the bee. <laughs> a bee is just a very small insect, and that's what I see in him as. But we, we were saying, I mean, watching the watching the Kalakmet fight, he, he does get pasted from start to finish. Have you seen it, by the I way? I mean, this is a guy, seen this him? Is a guy that medalled... He's last one against the Kazakhs. Yeah, I've yeah. seen his yeah. last one. And listen, like, he, this is a guy that medalled at the Worlds 2019. Yeah, oh, he beat, he beat Madrimov in yeah. the amateurs. Very, very good Kazakh. I mean, mm. crikey. So he, you know he's tough. So you have to, in your head, whatever you hit him with, plan for, plan for the distance, right? No, no, not at all. Uh, he, he's going to come with fire and he's going to walk onto my far, sharp punches all night. My power's underestimated. I know it is. Oh, I well, I was saying that. I feel like you're really developing into the yeah. weight and you're starting yeah. to punch a lot harder I'm massive. Now. When I get in there, I'm going to yeah. be a lot heavyweight. At least I'm going to be big. And uh, he's going to be walking onto this. And he, when, he's, when, he's, when he's landing on, on my arms and around my body, around my head, he's going to be like, hang on, I'm in the deep end now. And uh, it's going to be a tough night for him. You know, so Chris says there, you know, where he's been in there with that world medalist, etc. Very good amateur. And he went the distance. On the flip side, does it give you that motivation to, to try and stop him? Yeah, to definitely. To try and be the first. What a statement that would yeah. be. Yeah. Because um, 
yeah, the, the other guy, he could, he could have took that, took the opportunity whenever. For some I don't know why he didn't, but it just seemed like every time he landed a shot, he stepped back and um, mm. kind of let him off the hook. There was times he could have took him out, and um, I'm planning to jump on those opportunities when they mm. come. I think that's just the inexperience, because he's only 3-0, the, the yeah. Kazakh. I think Yelusinov was a little bit like that when he first turned yeah, over. And he was. The Kazakhs can actually be quite cagey in the amateurs, yeah. as good as they are, um, so that, that inevitably will change. Next year, then, if you get past this one, Anybody particularly domestically you got you set, set your sights on? I've always got my eye on cheese. But I need that rematch. I need to get get that out of my head. Um, I think the record needs putting straight. I don't see why they won't want the fight anyway. Um, it's not, we're with the same sort of age, and uh, I think it's something that we all need to put put behind us. It's a great uh, division domestically anyway. So if that fight didn't happen, there's so so many great yeah, fights there's loads out of there options out there, and uh, I'm ready for all of them because. Like I said, I'm young, I stay ready, and uh, I don't need to avoid anyone, mm. and um, I won't avoid anyone. Good man. Well, it's been good to have you uh, on the scene this year, and good luck on Saturday. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers, Thanks very much. Cheers, mate. All the best. So, um, God, he's got solid hands. He's got my knuckles there. Um, <laughs> So Kieran Conway uh, in action on Saturday night. Um, looking forward to that one. Um, McCauley McGowan will bring it, but will it be uh, enough? Mm. That's the question. Um, two men who certainly are going to bring it, Martin McCauley and Sergei Kuzmin. Ten rounds of heavyweight action. We know what sort of fight this is going to be. Let's hear from both the guys now with Eddie. Well, we move to the third televised fight on the card. For me, I think this could be fight of the night. The WBC International heavyweight championship between Martin Bacoli and Sergei Kuzman. This is a fantastic fight, an absolute must win for both of these talented heavyweights to move on and potentially look to challenge for the world heavyweight title in 2021. I'm going to start with Martin. Martin, welcome. This is the kind of fight you've been looking for for a long time, isn't it? It's never easy to match talented, dangerous heavyweights. Respect to Sergei Kuzman for stepping up, but this is it. This is your moment to shine and put your footprint on the heavyweight division. Yeah, thank you, Eddie, and thank you everyone who come down here. I want to thank you first for a big, this, uh, big, deep, big fight for me. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Like I always call you know, people out. I always want to fight the best. I, Saturday night, I have a best opponent close to you, only your left. So I'm looking forward to that. This is the first time for a long time, probably since the, Martin, uh, the Michael Hunter fight, sorry, who, someone who is coming to win, someone who is a world-class heavyweight. You know, a fantastic amateur. You saw him KO Joe Joyce in the amateurs. We know Kuzmin punches very hard as well. Having the danger in the opposite corner, is that going to take your performance up the levels as well? And must mean you're very excited for this fight as opposed to going in there and knowing you've got an easy night's work. Yeah, yeah, like you said, I'm so exciting, you know, in the boxing, if you don't take risks, so yeah, you're not a professional. Uh, I've been training with AJ, all top guys out there in the UK, so I can see he's my opponent. I can't see anything, you know, we are, this is a men fight, it's not a woman fight. So, a Saturday, looking forward, and I will see what he's going to bring on the table. And finally, you know that Kuzmin is a big puncher, he's an aggressive fighter as well. Do you look for the knockout? On Saturday, you need to make a statement to the world that you are the man for the heavyweight division. Don't forget, I am big punch as well, and I can get punched. That is the problem. So he's in a big trouble because I'll not give him time. He can get punched. He can punch. I can get punched. I can punch. And the best, we'll see the best was the best last night. You know, we both have 15 fights, one loss to one guy. So this is me now. All our career is online. The best must win. Yep, correct. One defeat to the same individual. We'll go to Sergey Kuzmin and thank you to Andre Rybinski, Vadim Kornlov and Max and the World of Boxing team. Always come well prepared, always come to win. Sergey, this is a massive fight for you, a must-win fight on Saturday. Серёг, это большой бой для тебя. Ты, наверное, должен выиграть. Что ты думаешь по этому поводу? Ну, для меня каждый поединок, тем более за пределами моей родины, проводя его... В этот раз здесь, в Англии, и я считаю, что здесь ничего не меняется. Я, как всегда, приехал за победы и буду выигрывать и выходить делать все для того, чтобы победить. Well, for me, uh, every fight is uh, is very important, uh, no matter who is opponent. And uh, you know, as always, I come to Great Britain to win. So we just uh, um, a new goal for me. Uh, in face of Martin Bacoli. 
I said to Martin McCauley that Sergio was a big puncher. He said, I'm also a big puncher. Do you see yeah. this fight ending inside the distance and do you see this being the fight that everybody expects? Я тебе сказал, что ты большой панчер, Мартин тоже. Видишь ли ты, что этот бой пройдет всю дистанцию или он закончится досрочно? Ну, вы знаете, в супер тяжелом весе, как всегда, может исход завершить один удар. И в нашем поединке тоже Мартин хороший боксер, я высокого класса боксер. Так что я думаю, что все возможно, что пройдет всю дистанцию, либо будет нокаут, здесь уже зависит э, от самого поединка, от э, как будем боксировать, кто как будет готов, как выдержит свой план на бой, и, соответственно, затем и будет победа. You know, in heavyweight division, you know, anything can happen, you know, one punch can change everything, but you know, it depends how the me or Martin will uh, follow the plan for the for the fight you know it also can go all distance you know nobody knows well i promise you this will be a cracking fight two genuine top 15 world heavyweight uh, rated guys here in a must win fight for both of their careers i expect this to be a tremendous tremendous fight in the ring around 7 30 7 45 live on sky sports box office in the uk and the zone around the world gentlemen can we have a head to head here please Tell you what, Adam Kornlov, he's got a hell of a stable. Got Bivol, Akmadliev, uh, Victor Postol, Kuzmin. Scary Christmas party. Exactly what I was about to say. That scares the life out of me. <laughs> yeah. That actually scares the life Merry out Christmas, of me. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Just kidding, I hate Christmas. Joe, you know, when I look at this fight and I look at it from a boxer's perspective, tactically, I think this is fight of the night. Yeah. You know, I just think they're going to mix fire with fire, both hit the centre of the ring, both big punches, like they've said there, and I just think naturally they're, they're aggressive. They try and land the big shots. So for me, fireworks. I still remember Kuzmin stopping Joe Joyce around about 2013 because he won a couple of European medals. He won gold in 2010, I think he was, and then 2013, I think he won silver. Um, so around that kind of time when Joe was just sort of starting to sort of creep through after AJ had, had obviously turned pro. Um, he started fast. I personally think, you know, sometimes in the amateurs they can yeah. stop fights mm. a bit early. Mm. And I personally think Joe could have carried on and things could have been different. But point is that the power's there. No, oh, nobody knocks massive. Joe over unless they can really win. No, 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 no. He's a big puncher. And I think he's quite different to the likes of Povetkin. He's sort of well technically schooled fighters, I think. Uh, and he's, you know, though he's obviously got very good boxing ability, I think he uses real power and brute force to win his fights. Um, and Martin, though he's probably out of the two a little bit of the unorthodox fighter, but can take a shot. We spoke to, to Billy once before, I think during, was it fight camp or before, that the build-up to the Michael Hunter fight was terrible for mm. Martin. He had a lot of personal issues, so he sort of rubbishes that defeat as if, you know, it, it, it shouldn't count. But look... There was a lot me, going on outside There was the a room. lot going yeah. on. Um, but look, he did lose the fight. He's learned from it. And for me, it's a big, big fight, this. Big yeah. fight. For sure. Um, and one man who was planning on a big fight, Lawrence Okoli. Uh, of course, Christopher Vivacci fell through with Kobe. We wish him well. He's now in yep. against uh, Nikodem Yazeski. 12 rounds at cruiserweight. Both men are standing by now with Eddie. Well, we move from one big heavyweight fight to another big heavyweight fight. Another fight that really does hold the key to the winner going on and looking to challenge for a world heavyweight title shot in 2021. Huey Fury against Marius Wack. Marius Wack's seat is gone down. He is about six foot nine and we'll see that when he stands up. But Huey, first is for you. This is the kind of fight you've been after for a while, of course. You, you join forces with us. You jump straight into the Alexander Povetkin fight. Had a couple of stay busy fights, but now straight back into the deep end against Marius Wack. Yeah, 100%. And uh, I believe I'm ready for all these fights, and people's going to see a major difference because I'm very confident, I work hard, and people's going to see that. You've seen Marius Wack fight at the top level for a long, long time. Signs that actually he's improving 
uh, as, as his career's gone on. I remember seeing him box Jarrell Miller. We saw him in a great fight with Dillian White in Saudi Arabia just over a year ago as well. Tough fight for you as well. Tall, awkward, um, technically sound as well, and a fantastic chin. Yeah, Marius Wacky is a tough, tough fella, isn't he? He's been whacked to death and he's still been standing up. So, like I said to you, it's going to be a good fight, but Marius Wack's not for anyone like me, so I'm looking forward to it. Do you feel the need in this fight to make a statement? I think if there's any criticism of your career so far, it's sometimes you haven't quite set the world alight in the ring, put your foot on the gas and looked explosive. The fights you've been in for such a young age, incredible. And we know you've mixed it with the top guys. But do you feel the pressure or the need to go out there and make a statement and knock Marius Wack out? I've heard it in your, your interviews that you want to knock him out, you believe you'll knock him out. Do you think that would make a big statement? Listen, like I said here, I can box him. I can knock him out. We'll see what I bring to the table. I believe in myself, truly, whatever I bring. The main thing is to get the W. But I'm looking forward to putting the show on. Like I say to you, Marius Wax never boxed anyone like me before. Marius, and, and thank you to your translator as well. Um, Huey Fury said in the week he believes he's going to knock you out. I hear from Poland you're in tremendous shape, ready for this fight. Także Huey Fury mówi, że się znokautuje, ale jesteś niesamowicie w tej formie z Polski i mówi, że jak jak to walka. 43 zawodników to podobnie mówiło co, co, co mój przeciwnik. Uh, 43 other fighters were saying similar things to my opponent. Uh, mam nadzieję, że, mm, że tą energię, którą teraz, teraz um, wykorzystuję, zostawi sobie na, na tą sobotni pojedynek. Uh, I hope that this energy that he's using now will, will be left for the Saturday's uh, fight. Na pewno jestem um, w jednej z lepszych uh, dyspozycji w dotychczasowej karierze i na pewno jutrzejszym uh, w sobotnym pojedynku uh, będę chciał wygrać ten pojedynek po prostu. I'm certainly in one of the best form in my career and I will want to win the Saturday's bout. You've been around a long time, but you seem to be still improving as a fighter, still putting some of your best performances together late on in your career. A victory for you with boxing in Poland would be huge for the rest of your career. Ty już jesteś, ty już jesteś bokserem przez dłuższy czas i na pewno jest to, jest to już to twoja długa kariera i ta wygrana w boksie by dla ciebie dużo znaczyła, by dużo poprawiła. Uh, but, uh... Ten pojedynek będzie bardzo ważny dla jednego i dla drugiego. E, mój przeciwnik na pewno jest o wiele młodszy, e, chce się do, dobić do tych walk e, o tytuły, a ja mu będę chciał przeszkodzić. Tak samo wiem, że wygrana nad nim e, przybliży mnie gdzieś e, do, 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 do kolejnych lepszych pojedynków. It will be a very difficult fight for both of us. I know that my opponent is much younger and he wants to fight his way up to the title, but I want to stop him. And, uh, and I also want to, want to win this fight. Thank you, Marius. And finally, Huey, for you, we know the division's on fire right now. Big performance from you will lead to a massive 2021. 100%, that's the plan. And I believe I belong in this uh, division, especially at world level, and I'm going to take over. Mark them words. Well, we look forward to another great heavyweight fight. Huey Fury against Marius Wack in the ring around 9 p.m., just slightly before on Saturday night. Do not miss it. Gentlemen, can we have a head-to-head -head here, please? Eddie nearly disappeared in that shot. Yeah, didn't he? it's not often you see him looking up. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry about that, by the way. I thought we were handing over to Akoli and Jezeski. Then I looked over and I went, well, "That's not Akoli and Jezeski. That's up next." Um, yeah, so fight number 28 this for Yuri Fury, growing in experience. Um, yeah. Stepped up early, unsuccessfully against three of the world's top ten in Parker, Pulev, Povetkin. Um, he's shown he's at European level for sure. Um, Without a doubt. And, and it, I suppose in, in the sense of where he's fallen short, hasn't been dissimilar to Marius Vak. Of course, though Marius Vak at 40 is now right at the end of his career. Um, so in theory, this is a, a good opponent for Hugh. I for think Hugh. so. I think a, a few people uh, raised their eyebrows when this was, fight was made. Don't, didn't think that stylistically it would gel, but 
I'm the opposite, if I'm honest. I've been so impressed with Huey of late. I think he's really starting to sit down on his shots and put a lot of power into them, just trying to hurt his opponents instead of... We, we know how good of a boxer he is. We see it against Parker when he was moving, picking the it's shots. been too negative, though. Too points. negative. And, and, you know, it is quite effective, but it's mm. not pleasing on the eye. I think lately we've seen him really bite down on his gum shield and let the shots go. I think that, because his output... He doesn't throw many shots. What he does have, a very good knack of tying you up. But I think with the speed of foot that Huey has, I personally think Huey can look good in this fight. I think if he's good variation, up and down with the jab, really start throwing it. He throws a lovely right hook, Huey. And I think that could be the shot here. Jab to the body, right hook to the head. And yeah, I, I go against quite a few of the people that are saying this could be a boring fight. I think Huey can look good in this fight. Mm, for sure. Uh, of course, being in with Pulev, who, who is the main event, so had that yep. dreadful cut um, in the eyelid. Yep. And credit to him, really. Early on, wasn't it? Early yeah. on, and, and hung on through the whole fight. And I spoke to Kerry Kays, and he said that's the worst cut he's ever worked on. And Kerry's mm. been in the business for a while, mm. too. Um, so yeah, yeah it, fair it, play. It, it was a terrible cut. And look, he's shown a lot. You know, and he, us, it, he's one that I like when you see fighters that have lost and they still come back and they win and show that uh, a few defeats on your record isn't that bad. It's what you take from it. And we, he's learned an awful lot. You know, he didn't get the rubber to green against uh, Parker. A lot of people thought he may have won the fight, though, like you say, he was on the back foot, etc. cetera. Um, he suffered cuts, all different sorts of things. Uh, he's had to pull out of Monte Carlo. Um, so I think as far as experiences are concerned, he's got lots of room in his bank. And I think now with the development, we had Peter on, didn't we? Was it mm, last yeah, show? Uh, yeah. Just says, you know, and I think he's a very fair man. He's not biased. Uh, when he's talking about Huey, saying how well he's coming on, not just technically, but as far as his maturity and his strengths coming on. and um, that, For me, that's exciting because he's another one that I enjoy watching as of late. And I think you can really throw him in the mix. You know, a win here puts him on the brink. Mm, for sure. Um, again, as we say, Lawrence Coley um, may well move up to, to heavyweight next year. Without um, a doubt. Former British Commonwealth cruiserweight uh, and European cruiserweight champion as well. But of course, not until he finishes his business um, at cruiserweight. I think he was really hopeful that he would get the win against uh, Klovotsky. Um, would have been a tough fight, but of course he's out. Um, they went down the list, tried to find some, you know, a, a sort of another mandatory challenger. Mm. But some of the guys, Jay Opatire and, and David Light from uh, Sydney and, and New Zealand, just too late notice to get them over with quarantine yeah. periods. Um, Sislak, they couldn't make that happen. Um, so they had to bring in someone from outside of the rankings. Jozeski is still going to pose a, a tough test for him. Yeah, he's, um, he's got a bit of a jerky style. He's got a hard guard. He could get in and out of range quickly. Uh, as far as Akoli moving up in weight, you, you're right. You know, you want to leave some sort of legacy, win something in the division, because otherwise, unless you're really struggling to make the weight, what's the point moving up? Yeah. You want to win something. So, look, I kind of conquered that. I like Usyk. I know he completely dominated the, the cruiserweight division, then moved up. But it would be lovely to win a world title, then move up to heavyweight. Um, yeah, Javetsky is, like I say, he's awkward. He's got a high guard. Um, you have to remind me of the opponent he fought, Chez. Oh, uh, you've now you've now put me off. <laughs> <laughs> the one where it was a no contest um, in the end. So he hurt his opponent. Sorry, I've thrown him now. He's gonna, yeah, because you me. went Chez, uh, Sislak. Sislak. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> okay, Chez. See. I'm going to go ahead and go Chez and Chez and Dave. <laughs> Chez. <laughs> Sake. Um, yeah, Sislak, yeah. yeah. He, he showed that he can punch. Uh, for well, actually, me, uh, for me I, I thought he was on his way to beating Sislak. Yeah, uh, I did. And, I did. And, and whatever Chizak's happened not that, bad. Chislak's not a bad fight. Uh, yeah, I think he got screwed in that third round, personally, if I'm honest. I, yeah. think, I think there was a bit of an inside job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think he was stopped when he wasn't ready to be stopped. I think he got hit on the back of the head when he was on the ground. It, it was a bizarre finish. And if I'm honest, looking at those two going back and forth, mm. there was not a lot between them. Um, and it hurts Sislak to that point. He's, he's dangerous. He's dangerous. You know, and like I say, he's got that. That was the first thing I took away from watching him was... He's awkward. Mm. Um, mm. So he's going to have to be on his game. Look, for me, with a Coley, jab is key. Sets everything up. Look nice uh, on the pads with Shane McGuigan yesterday. Jab's looking really, really sharp. Let's hear it from Lawrence Coley and Nicodem Jozeski. They're both standing by with Eddie. Thank you, guys. Before we go to the main event, another cracking fight, another battle of the undefeateds here in a very, very important cruiserweight contest. A Coley against Jozeski. We know a a Lawrence Coley due to fight. For the world title against Glowacki, he tested positive for COVID at the end of last week. Our best wishes to him and a massive opportunity for Jezuski, fellow pole, also undefeated, 20-0. Big opportunity for him to go and fight for the world title against Glowacki, which we expect to see early next year. Lawrence, welcome. 
One thing that amazed me about you when I gave you that bad news, and let me tell you, it's horrible as a promoter knowing how hard you've worked to have to deliver that to you when you get the text message to say, glowacki has got COVID. You were calm. You were relaxed. I know how hard you've worked. I know how much you wanted to fight for the world title. But you also know a new challenge presents itself on Saturday and you have to overcome it. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, for me, the most important thing is fighting. Um, the titles and stuff are all going to come in due time. So it was, uh, I thought it was my time this Saturday, but I have to just keep the train going and um, be a, a good and undefeated fighter here. I know that when you get that bad news and you are deflated, sometimes that can affect the performance, some kind it can affect the mojo going into the fight. You can't afford to do that here. You know you're in with a world-class fighter in Jezuski. You know a guy who, if he wins on Saturday night, he's going to have a massive all-Polish fight with Glowacki for the title. So you've got to go out there and make a statement on Saturday. No, definitely. I feel like, if anything, it's a positive because, you know, I'd won the British Commonwealth European and it was almost like, all right, the world title shots just come. But this feels like a final eliminator, so um, it's added a little bit of spice to, the, to Saturday for me. Um, so, yeah, I understand that, you know, he's, he's got um, the world at his feet if he manages to win, so I have to make sure that I go and do my thing. Obviously, you had a long camp for a, a southpaw in Glowacki. We know you are switching back to Orthodox, but how's that preparation been? Are you secretly a little bit pleased that you're fighting an Orthodox on, on Saturday night or a bit disappointed that all that hard work and southpaw sparring has gone to waste? No, you know, it's, that's in the bank now. So if I have to, obviously, um, don't want to overlook anyone, so I won't even talk about that. But ultimately, you know, Orthodox is what, we, what we're used to. So you see it every day. So it's nothing to switch back. Um, and I feel, yeah, super confident. Final question. You look like you've had a great camp with Shane McGuigan. You look like you're firing on all cylinders. You look like you're punching very, very hard really feeling the opportunity to go in and make a statement in there on Saturday, let some frustration go? Yeah, definitely. I feel like it's a good opportunity to put on a mature performance. Shane said um, he's not going to be happy with me if I don't do certain things in this fight, so I'm going to make sure that um, they all get done. Jezuski, welcome, welcome uh, via your translator as well. Thank you for taking this opportunity, a massive opportunity for you to go on and really make a, a name for yourself in the cruiserweight division. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mr. Eddie, and thank you for giving me uh, to give me for the chance. Uh, sorry about my English, because uh, <laughs> it's no good. Uh, but uh, what I can say, uh, this is a big chance for me. Uh, this is a chance from Eddie from the matchroom, and uh, I take this. Yeah. We know that Lawrence Acoli is. Uh Explosive, he's a big puncher, but very inexperienced as well as a professional, moved very, very quickly as well. You have more fights, you do have a little bit more experience as well. And expecting a tough fight. Yeah, I have big respect uh, to Lawrence because he's an uh, Olympian med medalist. Yeah, uh, I, have, I give him uh, respect. Uh, and now I'm here because we have a fight on Saturday, and this is uh, this, that's all. Yeah. We must go to the ring and give the fight, yeah. Uh, uh, this is a chance for me, uh, and I do everything what I can. But uh, now I think, uh, I don't know if it's a good moment or, or, or not good moment for this fight, but I take this now, and I go to the ring Saturday and give the fight, yeah. We know that victory for you would lead to a Glowacki fight for the world title. Massive fight would be for Poland. Massive opportunity. You have Marius Vak on the card as well. There'll be a lot of people watching in Poland. And I know it's a tough challenge, but a big opportunity. Yes, uh, but you know, uh, Glowacki have uh, uh, 12 or, of weeks uh, preparing for, for Okoli. I, ha I have only five days, yeah? Uh, and uh, now I uh, do everything what I got. I got uh, two days uh, to the Saturday, and we go to the ring, and that's all. Well, we look forward to it. Lawrence Akoli against Jezuski. The winner of this fight will face Glowacki for the WBO World Light, uh, Cruiserweight Championship. Again, big opportunity for Lawrence Akoli to make a statement and a huge chance for Jezuski as well. Gentlemen, can we have a head-to-head -head up here, please?
he's a, he's a big lad, isn't he, G uh, Yuzevsky? He is. He is a big lump. Um, I was just telling you, wasn't I? Like we just spoke about uh, Marku when he, you know, when we get four arenas back. I can't wait to hear his crap. Yeah, yeah. Same with the Polish. I remember boxing in Poland when I was an amateur, and it was n the most nutty regimental chanting I'd ever heard in my life. It honestly, it was frightening. Like Sparta style. It, 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 yeah, it yeah, was yeah. honestly. Like yeah. I lost on purpose. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, he was right there, what he said about not losing that Southport experience. Uh, and the other thing is, is that Shane McGuigan, having coached Luke Campbell for, for so long, will, will understand the ins and outs of, of the Southport stance. And you know, there's no guesswork there. So he knows what he's doing. And if he gets through this, it, he'll be twice as prepared when he faces yeah. Slovakia next year. It's, it's a great warm up. Mm. You know, uh, he's in there with an unbeaten guy who really fancies his chance and wants to set up. And that all Polish fight with Glovacki so he's going to give it everything obviously but yeah as far as preparation is concerned it, um, it, it's great you know a lot of people that may not have ever been in the ring don't understand how tricky it is fighting a southpaw they just have this weird knack of getting on the outside it's very difficult to establish a jab and your jab obviously is what helps you get into a rhythm and sets up all the other shots Against the southpaw is very difficult. You know, a lot of people say the good, uh, you know, the good technique or tactic is to get on the outside. Mm. Well, I think sometimes when you're doing that a little bit too much, depends what. Yeah, I think it's about getting a bit of variation, and for him, it's brilliant preparation. It really is. He seems to have kind of unpacked his, his jab a lot under Shane. Just watching him yesterday, and, and he's, he's kind of falling over his front foot far less than than he was. Um, in previous years and, and turning through the right hand everything's much much more he, he balanced it's much more centered yeah do you know what I'll, I'll jump in on that one because he was either one or the other wasn't he he was either too much on his front foot or too much on his back foot and then i think both with his size lead to a clinch so when you're falling you're going to grab hold of your opponent on the flip side when you're coming back they fall short you grab hold of them and i think that was the problem uh, and you're, you're right i think being centered getting that correct balance you know, it's your foundation, it's where everything comes from. You know, when you see these big punchers knocking people spark out, it's usually because they're centered and they've got great balance. You know, these are everything. And I think if Shane and, and Lawrence can improve that, which it looks like they have, it'd be a different fight altogether. Yeah, we talked about that weird ending to the um, to the Sislak fight. The, the, the man we've got to thank for all of this, I suppose, is, uh, is Myris Bredis, because it was a strange end to the Glovocci fight that led to this title being vacant um, in the first place. Um, that was a bizarre ending, and of course the vacant Nuts. title's been waiting ever since for someone to grab hold of it. It won't happen now till next year. For, for Lawrence Acoli, of course, the rule if you're the WBO champion is when you... If you, if you vacate to go up a division, you automatically become mandatory. Oh, potentially, that, that would mean he was one of AJ's mandatories or whoever held the belt at that time. Do you feel he would be ready immediately for world title shots at heavyweight? Would you no, put him in as, no. a, a little bit further down? No, you, you, I, I think a couple of fights filling out into the division, mm. uh, that's not going to happen straight away. It will take time. Um, I think he'll want to be in there with top 20 opponents. You know, I wouldn't go in there with a top 10 yet. He's got the ability and he's certainly got the size to grow into the, the, the division, no doubt. But I think going in with the top 10 straight away would, would be dangerous. I think he needs a bit of time, two, three fights at least, at the very least, just to establish some real size in the, in the division. But he's certainly got the frame to do so. He's got the, the, the ability, no doubt. Uh, I know some people... You know, he's been in some stinkers, hasn't he? Against Askins at, at Wembley, yeah, it was, it was yeah. terrible. But that's changing now. And, and do you know what? I think in some respects, because he has that size and over a lot of his opponents, it's an advantage to be able to grab hold of him and rough him up. And it, it burns a lot of energy. Here's, here's the really interesting thing about him is, is that I think a lot of opponents have gone in there, as Chamberlain um, and Garbu, physically very strong guys, and thought, I'm going to be the one to out-muscle this guy. Yeah. I can tell you now, GB... I had a bit of a wrestle with Lawrence and I'm, I'm reasonably <laughs> strong he is strong mate Beast. You, you don't realise because he's quite because he's long and yeah. it almost comes across as quite wiry he, he grips you yeah. and you're going nowhere and so inside he's, he's actually quite cute and knows what he's doing it's just as you say he's 
he's been kind of, I suppose, fast track right through the amateurs. Not dissimilar to how AJ was, really. You forget because he went to Rio, you think, well, he must have been really experienced. He wasn't really. I think he had 25, 26 amateur bouts. They rushed him through the WSB. And because he was knocking people out, stopping people, the only person to put him away was Eris Landy Savon in the WSB. And then I think the repeat at Rio, he, he was he definitely showed some improvements. And they were only about four or five months apart. Yeah. He's got bottle. He, he's not afraid of anybody. He's got utter confidence and belief and the one thing we speak to Boazzi and Cordina and Kez on the GB squad they used to laugh they go his self-confidence is of somebody that's already won five world titles he has yeah. no no question marks in his head that he's not going to achieve things and I've seen him through the amateurs travel with the team he has proved time and time again that the attributes he's got whether stylistically you think they're the most pretty to watch or not they're very very effective he's a very hard guy to beat yeah definitely and you said it there his mental uh, capability mental strength is second to none you know he really believed in himself how he took that news that he wasn't fighting for a world title he said so well he's like patient you know i will mm. get my time eventually yeah uh, and we have Hello, got mate. him we have got him <laughs> hey, what's going on how are you doing mate i'm well thank you good to you're see you well good mate to see thank, you, thank you yeah um so just talk to me about this year generally speaking for you covid situation family friends how's life been outside of boxing uh, yeah everything's been good obviously I it's a bad time for the world, but for me personally, you know, I've... Uh, I've so, are we going to raise this up? Because you're about okay. six, you're about a foot taller than everyone else we've had on. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, we've got Tyson Fury on next, that's why. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, no, yeah, no we have. Yeah, so, sorry, start again. So, this year... Yeah, no, it's been, it's been um, a tough year for the world, but, you know, for me, I've managed to kind of make it through with um, finding ways to train. It's been kind of a, like a, a challenging time, I think, for everyone. Um, so, I've just kind of made do, really. Mm. Do you, um, I know obviously Shane's worked with Luke for, for a number of years and he understands that southpaw style really well. Of course, you're going to be going back to prepping for that for next year if you get through this fight. Do you have any conversations with Luke about the southpaw style and yeah. certain things they do? And has he given you advice? He, yeah, he has actually, funny enough. Yeah, um, yeah, he has. He's, he's given, I don't want to give too much away because no, Ryan Garcia course. might be watching this. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But uh, definitely he's given me little tips and stuff, you know, of stuff that's hard to see or to do that yeah so yeah you're a full, former reptile fighter you've got to be good with the south yeah, yeah, no, and also i'm not sure so and for, funnily enough on the great britain team there was two south pause for my competition for yeah. the whole like year that i was there so it was every every week i was having south pause sparring anyway so it's it's kind of normal to me talk to me about the weight how are you feeling at cruiser no, weight I feel, I feel good like I, i'm not gonna i was saying already i feel quite shocked how easy i've made it this time because i enjoyed um i enjoyed lockdown yeah. heavily, you know what I mean? I really, really enjoyed. So um, I came into the camp a little bit heavy you know, than usual, um, but once I started getting into training, the weight kind of falls off quite yeah. easily, so yeah. We were speaking just then that it, I think it's inevitable at some time in the future you're going to move up to heavyweight. Is it, uh, for you, very important that you win a world title at cruiserweight before you move up to heavy? Yeah, definitely. I feel like I've done way too many training camps and diets and stuff like that to you know, um, yeah. not go for, and especially where the world title is, God willing, win this one, it's the next fight. Um, so I think, yeah, it just, it just makes sense. Um, and obviously the main man, your mentor and your friend in that main event, how, how's he been this year? Have you been called into to action at any point for sparring? I can't imagine yeah. you have. Um, not, not, for, not during this part of camp, because obviously I have my own fight to um, think about. It would have been good to spar him now because the guy Perfect, got right, yeah. but. Um, um, no, we, but during lockdown, we managed to get some work in, you know, staying sharp and stuff in the gym. Um, so that so early on in camp, and then obviously had my own camp. Yeah. Been an important lesson that that defeat uh, summer of uh, 2019 for him. It seems like that, that potentially could be the making of him and, and his legacy long term. Is that fair? Yeah, I agree. So I think so. I think you know, um, of, like as much as he's a he's a realist and stuff like that, I think you know. It was all, you know, um, it's kind of just showed the reality of boxing to him as well. So every cat, it's nothing's a foregone conclusion. So I'm not saying he doesn't train hard, but now it's like, and no, no stone unturned, and even stones that aren't there to be turns are getting turned yeah, as well. Yeah. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's been good. All right, two, two questions for you. How do you win your fight, and how does AJ win his? Uh, I, I think I'm gonna win um, by like sort of mid-round sort of stoppage, like either the ref or his corner, I think, because um, he seems 
So I, it's hard to tell what he's like in, in the actual fight because he seems quite timid at the moment, mm. but he might turn it on, on fight day. Um, so it depends how well he... You'd rather that, right? You'd rather him come forward, wouldn't you? And yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I'd rather him come, like, than run. I don't think he's going to run, yeah. definitely. But um, we're interested to see how he takes it when I land um, clean on him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? How, how he sort of reacts. So I think I'll get, get him in the middle round. So I'm not going to rush mm. the first few rounds. I think I'm going to take my time and because um, I don't know him or anything yeah, yeah. about yeah, him. Yeah, of course. Um, and then we'll see. Um, and I think AJ will do something similar as well because Pulev is, um, is still a world-class fighter, as you saw with Povetkin. Even in, as they get a little bit older, they still got the tricks and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. So I think AJ has to take his time and then eventually he'll break him down. Just um, watching you on the pads yesterday and even just in a couple of minutes, I could see like your, your lead hand position has kind of changed a little bit now on the chain and the jab's been unpacked a bit more and you seem to be... Um, not that you were falling over your shots particularly, but just the way you're turning through those shots is a little bit different. Yeah. Does that feel like the changes, the fundamental changes that, that Shane's been making with you? Do some of those start to feel autopilot now? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100% like, people that I've sparred um, before or early on with working with Shane, now, you know, say there's so much of a difference. Because like, I thought I was good even before, obviously, <laughs> you know what I mean? But then people are like, oh, mate, you're so much better. I'm I told like, you, I'm wavering self-confidence. Yeah. I'm <laughs> wavering, yeah. <laughs> but um, they're saying there's a difference. I'm saying that even my, you know, close family and friends that come to the gym, this camp, they're like, yeah, you're looking um, great. So it's just about executing. I think really and truly, the problem that I think I've had is, if I'm going to, you know, talk honestly, is that, um, it's one thing doing it in the gyms, you know, with um, head guard and all this, that and other, because I've spied, you know, most of the top um, fighters in the UK and wherever else. It's about being able to execute on fight day. So I always find a way to win, but there's certain stuff that I do in the gym that I don't do necessarily on fight. So it's about taking it from the gym into the... What, um, looking more exciting, you mean? Yeah, more, well, yeah, more exciting, because I feel like if, I, if I'm once again honest again, yeah. it's that I know that... I'm happy to win and last year I got all stoppages but there's more that I can I'm, I'm capable of doing that I need to be able to bring on to the fight mm. if I'm going to be you know world champion etc etc yeah, have yeah. you managed to work out what why that that is why you haven't been able to transfer I, it I, I, I know personally myself, I don't want to say yeah okay. that, do you know I mean but I think but yes fight, you have will, got an answer I've got an answer yeah, and, and I will be aiming on Saturday yeah, I've always kind of said that where you're so big at cruiser, you've got that advantage, that size. I think naturally it must be hard just to not be able to grab hold of your opponent because you know you can wear them out. Yeah, you no, know when you're in them clinches and throwing them around, it's so draining. It really is. And if you've got that advantage, it must be hard not to use it because yeah. it's effective. And that's that's one of the things that we was, you know, me and Shane have discussed is in sparring, it's the same thing. You can tie so, so now he gets people in two rounds at a time, two, two like no more than two, so I can't tired people yeah. out it's yeah. just everyone's fresh um, coming and giving it all so, and it's like for me obviously I'm tall quite strong and stuff like that I feel like my opponents you know from long range they feel the power and stuff so they yeah. want to close of course they want to grab so, out yeah so but it's up to me to like not because I know once you get inside I'll be able to tie you up mm. but it's up to me to know that I can do more damage from range or mid-range punching than from inside where it's safe, yeah. do you know what I mean? Mm. But we'll, we'll see on Saturday. Let's see, you? I can't good wait. Man. Really good to talk to you, man. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. Good luck. We'll see you at the way. Take care, mate. Take care, mate. So, Lawrence Okoli, Nikita uh, Jezeski, uh, 12 rounds at Cruiserweight. I'll tell you what, the, the one thing I can tell you, for, from having met him, I think, first time when he just got on the GB squad, um, he, he can, I think when you first meet him, I remember what Fraser Clark saying to me, you might think he's a bit standoffish, but he's a proper nice guy. When you yeah. get to know him, really yeah. funny, good sense of humour, um, very, very calm all the time. Like, that never changes. He's always, yeah. he's always on that yeah. level. Um, yeah, I wish him well on Saturday. Yeah, I do. Look, he, he's a very good fighter. He said it there. He's had an advantage, and that's led to some of his fights not being the most exciting. Uh, I drive you mad with this all the time about using the feint to draw your opponent in and, and I think if, I, if he was to do that Lawrence Okoli try and you know really set the trap to get his opponent to come in and land the shot I think that would be very effective as well yeah we saw our Fowler's um, jab improved against uh, Adam Harper in fight it's camp. the most important shot in boxing yeah. without a shadow of a doubt yeah for sure and I think the way the way his is looking uh, under Shane and from things I've heard in the gym and speaking to Chris Bill and Smith as well um, we, we may well see kind of a Coley 2.0 properly uh, given that they've had a really good amount of time together him and McGuigan to work on some of those fundamentals it's it's nice knowing that he's not content winning the way he has been. Yeah. It's, it's nice knowing that he wants to excite, he wants to look good, he wants to look better. Better how he's looking in the gym, you know, transfer that like he said. And for me, that's it. 
encouraging and also exciting because there's an awful lot to like. We've seen him in the gym. We've seen how spiteful he can look and how entertaining he can look. Uh, if he can transfer that into the ring on fight night, it's, it, I wouldn't say it's a big if, but it is an if. If he can do that, the future is very bright for Lawrence Akoli, not just in the cruiserweight division, but in the heavyweight division. You see there how tall he is. You know, he's, got, he's a you know, very big frame. If he can fill out into that frame, I'm not saying he'll be the biggest heavyweight, but he won't be far the smallest, that's for sure. Well, our camera team, as you might just see, have been picking up a few shots of, uh, of the IBF belt, the, uh, the WBA <coughs> belt, the heavyweight. So, hey, the best one, the red looks one. Looks the familiar. best one, the red one, obviously. <laughs> Darren just brings his in sometimes. Yes, yeah, it's in my room. Yeah. I'll sleep with it. <laughs> um, so uh, the guys are just making their way to uh, the main stage. I don't know if we've got a shot of that yet, but you'll be seeing them just uh, in a few moments' time. There is Kubrat Pulev, the former European champion and, and world title challenger. Vladimir Klitschko, about seven years ago now, he uh, looking to roll the dice one last time at world level against Anthony Joshua. A huge opportunity for, for him and one that he probably didn't think was going to come around. Yeah, like I go back to last week. It's similar in my opinion. I think it's, uh, it's Pulev's last chance, you would say. I don't know when his 40th birthday is, but you'd think it's his last crack, in my opinion. Um, we saw the kind of problems that Alexander Povetkin is slightly older but world level contender caused AJ in the first half of their fight can Pulev um, cause uh, any problems in the same way are we ready to go? we're not quite ready guys we're just hanging on the big man AJ is uh, making his way down <laughs> Never he's only one floor above us I know everybody <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you've got to keep people waiting when you're the yeah, lame man of course you, you have of course um, you have so yeah this one's Saturday night uh, live on Sky Sports box office uh, in the UK um, the zone in the US got to start 7pm here, I was just going to say, I, haven't, I, I don't think I ever push you for predictions on the show. No. I'll, I'll give you mine. All right, okay, it's a bit vague, but I'm going either 4, 5, 6, AJ, and I think it's going to be the left hook that either starts it or finishes it. Hang on. Yeah. You're going with me? Well, I, th I think when you look at the Klitschko fight, the one shot that he's... You, you have to look at the, the one fight that the fighter's lost. You know, he's, he's been unbeaten throughout his career apart from that. Mm. And it was that left hook that did the damage. Uh, Klitschko throws a left hook in a very different yeah, way to Joshua. He does really long with it. Uh, yeah, and, and he kind of he faints in and out of range and then he drops the shoulder and he, he loops it over the top. It's, it's a dangerous punch, but he did undo him with him. He put him down three or four times in that fight, in those five one. rounds. Yeah, uh, a heck of a punch. And, mm. and, and of course, we know Klitschko's dangerous with that punch when he's hurt. And But Pulev had success in that fight. We must forget Yeah, that. he did. He did. He throws a wonderful one too. He really does. Really long with it. So I think AJ's got to bring his feet out. And here is the big man now. Well, he's walking in. Anthony Joshua, the unified heavyweight champion of the world. His first mandatory defence is winning the belts back uh, about a year ago now. He's sat down and ready to go with Kubrat Pulev and Eddie Hearn. Thank you, gents. Uh, here we go. This is it. This is the curtain closer for a difficult 2020, but it doesn't get any bigger. The unified world heavyweight championship between Anthony Joshua and his mandatory challenger, Kubrat Pulev. Live and exclusive on Sky Sports, box office in the UK and the zone around the world. I want to just thank a few people before we move forward. Of course, we know how difficult it's been to stage major events this year. We are delighted that we will be the first boxing event to have a thousand fans in the arena on Saturday night. The biggest thanks, of course, to Anthony Joshua and Kubrat Pulev. They stayed patient, they stayed ready. They're here because they want to fight. They didn't want to wait around. We know we're in a pandemic. They wanted to put everything on the line. Kubrat wanted his attempt to become a world champion. Anthony wanted to defend his throne. And thank you to the fighters for making sure we could be here this weekend. I want to thank John Wirt and Ivalo for all their hard work and the arguments along the way as well, and the emails, late nights, backwards and forwards, some things that you don't see. I also want to thank Bob Arum, um, and we'll hear from him shortly, and his team at Top Rank for all their hard work. And I particularly want to thank the two teams at Matchroom and 258. You know, this has been a really, really difficult exercise for us over the last few weeks in here at the Matchroom residency at Wembley and also, of course, at Fight Camp at the summer. The team have done a great job and worked tirelessly to make sure we keep the momentum of boxing moving. And there's no bigger momentum than being able to stage the World Heavyweight Championship. 258, Freddie, Andy, Benga, KD, everybody in the team. It's such a great partnership. We're all working together for the same cause and I want to thank everybody for their help. Before I go to the gentleman up here on this stage, I want to just pass over to Las Vegas. I was disappointed when Mr. Aram couldn't be here. We know, just celebrated his 89th birthday. Not fit for, for travel right now in this environment, but we just wanted to catch up with him, and he has a few words for us.
Hubert Pulev is a really rugged uh, fighter. We were privileged to promote uh, a number of his fights uh, in the United States. Uh, and uh, because of his mandatory position in the IBF, uh, he was able uh, to secure this fight with Anthony Joshua. Now, Pulev went into very, very serious training in Bulgaria. Uh, he is in the best condition of his career. And frankly, I look for him not only to beat Anthony Joshua, but to knock him out. Pulev is a big, rugged Bulgarian. And I really feel uh, that Joshua is vulnerable and that Pulev will not only beat him, but knock him out. Now, I will greet that victory uh, with the joy uh, that uh, it brings to me because I've become attached to Pulev. He's a terrific guy, and it's been a pleasure working with him. On the other hand, it will dis disappoint one of my other guys, uh, the uh, WBC champion, uh, Tyson Fury, because Fury was looking forward, is looking forward uh, to fighting Joshua. I talked to Tyson the other day, yesterday, as a matter of fact, uh, and uh, we were already making plans uh, for uh, Tyson Fury to fight other fighters because uh, uh, Fury agrees with me that there's a great, great chance that Pulev is going to upset the apple cart and beat Joshua. But that's why they do the fights. They do the fights to see what, what happens in the ring. I think without a question, whichever way the fight goes, it's going to be a very entertaining fight and certainly well worth uh, the money that uh, uh, fight fans in the UK will be paying uh, to watch it on pay-per-view. Thank you, Bob. I uh, enjoyed speaking to him the other night. Really believes his man, Kubrat Pulev, will do the business on Saturday night. Pastor John Wirt, John, to say a few words, thank you, and uh, look forward to a great event on Saturday. Well, thank you, Eddie, and thanks for having us. And first and foremost, thanks to AJ and Kubrat for doing this, because without them, we wouldn't be here. So kudos to both of you guys for stepping up and, and making this happen. I also want to thank, obviously, Eddie and your father, Barry, and uh, the rest of the team at Matchroom. They've been first class all around. I mean, this has been uh, really wonderful circumstances under very trying conditions. I also want to thank the network Sky Sports and DAZN, who will be televising this around the world. Obviously, I want to thank Bob Arum, our co-promoter at Top Rank, and all of his staff. I want to thank my partner, Ivalo Gatsev, and everybody at Epic Sports, who's also worked very diligently to make this happen. And finally, I want to thank my family, my wife, and my two boys, Alexander and Bobby, who have put up with this crazy career of mine in, in boxing. Uh, as some of you may know, I was uh, Don King's attorney for 15 years, and he had a saying, that I think is particularly fitting here. It's a hard road to glory. This has taken four years since Kubrat first fought Derek Chisora back in 2016 to finally get here. There have been four separate exceptions by the IBF for Joshua to take other fights in lieu of fighting Kubrat. There have been three failed purse bids uh, in, in the sense of we had to do a second elimination fight and we had to do a fight. Uh, so Dominic Brazili, we won a purse bid for that fight. He turned down the fight against Kubrat. We did a purse bid with Dylan White. We won that purse bid. He turned down the fight with Kubrat Pulev. And then we did a purse bid with Gerald Miller, and he turned down the fight. Ultimately, Kubrat ended up fighting Huey Fury, who, to his credit, and to Peter Fury's credit, they took this fight, even though uh, Huey had, had suffered a, a significant cut prior to the fight. So it's been really hard getting here, but we're finally here two days away. It's really exciting. We're really glad to be here. For Kubrat, this fight is about father and country. 
You know, Kubrat descends from an ancient people, the Thracians, prior to Bulgaria. And those people, they prided themselves on the prowess of their warriors. And that's what Kubrat is. He's a real warrior. He's here to do what his father dreamt for him. He, his father wanted two boys, or two, he wanted sons that would become boxers and who would eventually become world champions. And that's what Kubrat is here to do. Kubrat's in incredible shape. He's, he's thin, he's lean, he's a lean, mean fighting machine, and he's a man with a mission. And I believe on Saturday night, the referee is going to be raising his hand, and, and I believe there will be a knockout. And like Mr. Aram, I also believe that Kubrat will knock him out. So thank everybody, and thank you, Eddie, again for having us. Appreciate it. Thank you, John. We're going to hear from the trainers now. Firstly, Eben, welcome. Um, we know you've worked hard in camp with Kubrat Pulev. Looks in great shape. A lot of people talking about he looks light, he looks fresh, he looks ready, he's got a smile on his face. Ready for a big night on Saturday. Well, yeah, I mean, of course he's ready. This is where he's trained for his whole life. Um, it's a big opportunity. And, um, you know, even, even more important, you know, it's, it's a trying time here in, um, in the world right now. And um, he has a chance to um, take people's mind off easy a little bit um, with hopefully coming with this victory. Um, to entertain the public and the world, um, to so they can see through his journey of what he's done, you know, um, in his role to becoming a uh, heavyweight champion of the world. So um, it's, it's good for him to have his opportunity to help the world in the step of, towards normality, I guess, you know, with this fight going on. So we're ready. Talk about, obviously, the world right now. It's difficult to prepare. I don't think any fighter can hand on heart say they've had the perfect camp but you're pleased with, with your charge. You believe he's in the right shape physically and mentally to take the opportunity on Saturday. Absolutely. I mean, even more so mentally. And that's, I think that's the, the biggest point. Kubrat is mentally strong. And I think, um, I think we're going to show a lot of upset, upset the apple cart, obviously. He's ready, and um, he's going to do what he needs to do to win. And finally, your charge, Anthony Joshua. I'm sure you've studied him. I'm sure you've worked on him with Kubrat Pulev. Dangerous fighter. You know, he's in great shape as well. It's a big challenge. Two great heavyweights. Of course, he's, uh, I mean, you know, he's respectable and you need somebody like, like Joshua to be there in order to hopefully make, you know, the victory even that more, much more sweeter. I mean, if he wasn't, if he wasn't prepared, if, he, if I thought that he wasn't the one to, uh, to bring that, that, that diversity towards Cool Ride, it wouldn't be as good. So I think he's very well prepared and he's ready. He's in his home country. He's, he has a lot to prove. And I think he's going to come out there guns blazing and try to prove it. Thank you, Ivan. Rob? Again, obviously, the setup at EIS, it's been difficult for everyone in camp, but you guys have been working hard. AJ looks in great shape, had a good camp and ready for a great fight. Yeah, he's had a real good camp. He really enjoys boxing. Um, we've been doing more boxing sessions, two a day in some cases, for most of the week, so uh, he's enjoyed that. Um, he's sparring great, really good. Um, his athleticism's brilliant. Um, his physical strength is phenomenal, I think, and that's, that's what you know, people don't realise till they get in the ring with him is is how he can move and how strong he is. And I think, um, you know, he's, he's, he's worked long and hard on the discipline. Doesn't underestimate anybody, takes everybody dead seriously, but um, he's not unified champ twice for, for no reason. He's a fantastic fighter and, um, you know, he'll only get better. And, and this is a good fight for him sat, uh, Saturday night and it's one that we look forward to. We know we've always discussed the name of Kubrat Pulev. He's always been there three years ago. You were just 10 days away from facing him at the Millennium Stadium. I know you guys rate Pulev very highly, very well schooled, great amateur as well, and it's going to be a tough fight. Yeah, of course it is. Anthony fights the very best fighters out there. That's, that's why he's achieved what he's achieved. That's why he's got the name he's got. He doesn't duck anybody. He fights everybody. And certainly, Kubrat Pulev's one of the best out there, you know, if not in, in the top three heavyweights. He's, he's a really good fighter. But um, I believe Anthony's a better fighter. That's why he's the champion, and we believe he'll prove that Saturday night. A lot of people talking about, you know, the old Joshua versus the last performance against Ruiz. It was a lot more, you know, careful. It had to be. It was very disciplined as well. People asking if what Joshua we're going to get this time as well. Do you just think, and you see him as a much more rounded fighter now and someone who has the ability to do a bit of everything? I, ju I just think he's, he's, you know, he's gone through a learning experience. So, you know, wasn't 100% going into the first Ruiz fight. We took the rematch. You called me within 24 hours the next morning and... You know, in my opinion, he won the rematch comfortably, and we always thought he would. Uh, against a very good fighter in Ruiz, by the way, a uh, very strong, uh, underestimated boxer. But, um, you know, Anthony's Olympic champion, he's unified champion. Um, 
he's going from strength to strength. Um, he's looking forward to fighting on Saturday. He's enjoyed the camp. He's, he's boxed really well. And the discipline that you mentioned, he's, he's, been, he's been in him in the spas. He's, he's been disciplined. He's been on point. And, um, you know, Saturday night can't come soon enough. Thank you. We go to the fighters first, the, the challenger, mandatory challenger for the IBF title, Kubrat Pudev. Kubrat, welcome. Um, you've seemed very relaxed this week, very happy, uh, smiling around. You, you're good, you're fit, you're strong, you're ready to fight. Yes, I'm ready to fight because yeah, we, we stay a long time of waiting for this fight. Of course, 2017, I have a little problem here in breast, and that's why I tell to my trainer, yeah, we, we must go for winner, for win, and that's why we must don't fight now, maybe fight, the fi uh, we can fight uh, one, two years later, but I believe this fight come one day. That's why we don't fight 2017, and I'm here now, ready to fight good and to win, and I think Saturday night I take the win. Obviously, you were due to fight around three years ago. Anthony was undefeated at the time, but more inexperienced. Do you think this is a better time or worse time to fight AJ, and you're comfortable with where you are in your career right now? I understand what you mean, but uh, yeah, 2017, I was 30, I don't know, 38, 37, 36, yeah. I, I was younger. And but also I have this problem, but by one from the sparrings, and I just can can fight because I was not I can I can training, yeah. But now I'm healthy, and yeah, I'm not uh, 22 years old. I don't have time, of course, but I'm ready. I'm here. I I'm happy that that this fight stay now because in this pandemic all the world, it's not easy. But fight stay and I'm here and I'm, I'm ready for fight, I'm ready for win. And finally, John said about you know, your history of uh, that warrior mindset, how deep are you prepared to go on Saturday? We know Anthony is coming prepared, he punches hard, he's fast, you as well punch very hard as well. You're willing to do everything to become world champion on Saturday. Yes, I think I have everything. I'm ready, yes, of course, to respect from Anthony because, yeah, uh, Olympic uh, champion and world champion and, yeah, respect, good fighter. Uh, but, but I'm ready and I have everything to be champion. Thank you, Kubrat. AJ, welcome. It's been a long year. Seems like, looking at the pictures over there, seems like years ago. Has been a year since you fought. This is a great fight for you. I know you've prepped very hard with Rob McCracken and the team. Excited to box in a new environment on Saturday of all the pressure that you always get, but ready to make a statement. Yeah. The pressure that I went through last year was tough, but made me stronger mentally. Grew a thicker skin. And I've always been tough, always wanted to fight the best. That's never been an issue. What have I got to lose? I've got everything to gain. So I want to be successful in boxing. And the only way to be successful is taking on good challenges. And this is just another one that I'm looking forward to competing with. We were joking yesterday, I think it was, about fighters fighting YouTube guys. And you just said to me, oh, I always fight these top guys. You know, you look at that run from the 15th fight, Dillian White, Charles Martin, Dominic Brazil, Eric Molina, Vladimir Klitschko, Carlos Takam, Joseph Parker, Alexander Povetkin, Andy Ruiz, Andy Ruiz, Kubrat Pulev. Do you feel that sometimes you don't get the credit you deserve for the level of opposition that you've been facing? Or is that not why you're here? You don't want that credit, you just know you're continuously ready to improve and fight the best? I want to promote boxing. I don't want the credit. I don't yearn for it. I want to promote boxing. I'm very motivated, I'm hungry. That's why I put myself forward for any opportunity. I've got family to feed. I've got friends that I want to do business with. You know, the world's my oyster. But at the end of the day, I can't expect anyone to love me if I don't love myself. So I respect myself and that's why I put in work every single day. I know it was difficult for you in the Ruiz rematch to keep those reins tied in. You know, when you pinged Ruiz and you hurt him, you, know, you even said to me after the fight, oh, was that, was that all right? Was it entertaining? I said, no, you've done the business and you had a strict game plan 
for that fight. A lot of people asking if the maturity and, and what you learned throughout that experience will make you more cautious or we're still going to see that guy who loves to knock people out. I've been fighting at a top level ever since I went into the gym. I had a three-year amateur career and I went from walking into a gym to competing at the European Championships, Strand Job, Box Size, World Championships, Olympic Championships. I've been punched by the strongest people many times and I'm still here today. So that never changed me. So because I took a little loss to Ruiz, I don't think that's enough to change someone like me. I've got a lot of character. Every fighter trains hard, but it's character that separates us. And I feel like I've got a lot of character and I'll be keen to stand there. I'm going to go into the fight. I'm definitely going to get hit and he's going to get hit as well. So I'll be the last man standing. Obviously, it's been a difficult time for, for business, for the public, for sport. 1,000 people back in and, and 1,000 lucky people as well. You've been down, you've experienced fight camp, you've experienced uh, the Wembley residency as well for Usyk against Chisora. But it'll be good to see people, won't it, back in the arena with a smile on their face and good to see fans back supporting boxing in the arena. That'll be good for them. But my focus is just on Pulev. Um, no disrespect to the fans coming in, but I've got a serious job that I need to complete and then I'll, God willing, I'm confident I'll enjoy the victory after. And finally, I know you rate Kubrat Pulev, don't you? You rate him as a class fighter. You, you enjoy fighting quality heavyweights. He's been operating at the top level for a long, long time. You excited for this fight? You, you ready for this fight? You ready to put in a great performance? I heard you say you don't think this fight will, will go to the final bell. I know Kubrat Pulev for many years. I was in the training camp when his brother was sparring Warren Baster. I was in Vladimir Klitschko's camp when he was preparing for Kubrat Pulev. So I understand some of the tactics that needs to go into beating Pulev. And um, I'm prepared for it to go to the final bell, of course. I'm, I feel like I'm a 15 round fighter. I'm not a 12 round fighter. I'm a 15 round fighter. So if it needs to go to 12 rounds, I'll be more than capable to carry my stamina, to carry my boxing IQ my concentration and my strength until the final bell. Well, thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Kubrat. Thank you to all the teams. Thank you to the public. Thank you for everybody that's continued to support boxing during these times. We end the year with the biggest bang possible. In my opinion, the best heavyweight in the world defending his unified world heavyweight titles against mandatory challenger Kubrat Pulev, live on Sky Sports Box Office in the UK and DAZN around the world. Whatever you do, do not miss this. Gentlemen, if we could have a head-to-head -head up here, please. When you do look into an opponent's eyes, yeah. do, do you ever get a sense of, of how they're feeling or is it, is it almost, are you, are you trying to disguise how you're feeling as much as anything? Yeah, on, can I use myself as an example? Yeah, yeah. I used to sort of reverse psychology. I would almost look a little bit soft. I am, if I'm honest, I always am. He's a softy, he's softened but, with age. But I, look, do you know what, all of that nonsense doesn't matter. In my opinion, it's when the first bell goes and you stamp your authority and you let your opponent what you're all about then. You know, stand in front of someone, in my opinion, you know, you might be able to see some nerves in your opponent, but I think mo it's an individual sport. You're on your own path, you're on your own thing. And I think a lot of time it's about what happens when the bell goes. But I, I couldn't see anything there. I thought they both looked extremely confident. Pule for sure, I, I, I don't very think he's just lapping this up and enjoying the, the, the atmosphere and enjoying being here. I think, you know, Eddie said it there, and sorry, the, the, the Pulev's manager said that, um, you know, this is his kind of, his legacy, it's what his dad wanted for him. He wants to be the first Bulgarian heavyweight champion in the world. You know, there's so much on the line for him, and he, he's desperate to win this. You know, 
for him, the pot of gold is there, it's not no greater, is it? This is as big as it gets. What an opportunity for him to to make some serious history and cement his name in heavyweight boxing history. Well said, well said. Okay, well we will be back um, same time at one o'clock tomorrow for the uh, the weigh-in undercard uh, and the main event. Hope you've enjoyed the show uh, this afternoon, guys. Take care, and uh, we'll see you right back here on Matchroom Boxing social media uh, tomorrow afternoon.